Transport Fever 2 review. I've been playing Transport Fever for a couple of weeks now. This is version 2. And I am going to say this is an excellent game. It's currently my favorite video game. Of all the city builders and transport games, I think this is the best one. Um, I did play the first version, Transport Fever, and I played Train Fever, which came before that. And Train Fever was okay, but I never really enjoyed playing it, and I never spent any time with it. Transport Fever is pretty good. Transport Fever 2 is better. It's slightly better. It's not amazingly better. They added a few features. Um, so you, the towns automatically build. You're basically transporting goods from one town to another or from a factory to another factory or to a town. And you have airplanes, trains, boats, and trucks and buses. Passenger is separate from cargo. There's no mail. Mail, a post, postal mail would have been good. It's, it's in other games. And uh, it would have been easy to do. Uh, it's one of the features that I think is lacking. And the reason why is because mail is almost always city to city. Doesn't require a factory. So it would have been a good enhancement in the game. Uh, one of the things I don't like about the game, too few industries. You can go to the settings and populate it with small, many, or regular. And I chose the medium. I wish I had chose more. In some cases, there could be 10 of one industry and three of another, and you've got to go all the way across the map. And I understand it is a game and you have to enjoy playing it. But there's a lot of issues with production because they're just not producing enough. And I'm concerned that I don't think it can grow that much because I don't think they're producing enough raw materials to cause everything to grow. I haven't seen any traffic congestion. In the other version, Trans Transport Fever 1, I had lots of problems with congestion and with cargo in the wrong place and stuff not moving around. With this, I think they fixed a lot of those problems. It's easier to move stuff around and to make sure that the right item goes to the right place. Uh, so I really enjoy the game. In terms of, I, I also, I bought it on sale. I got it for like 50% 50, 50 off. I paid $15 US. Regular price is around $30. Is it worth the $30? Yes. I definitely believe it's worth $30, 30 US dollars. There's a lot of mods. There's not unlimited mods, but there's enough that you can add trains and trucks and buses and industries and stuff like that. With some, you don't have a lot of choice, but in general, I would say you've got enough. For example, uh, Let's say you have a high-speed train. They probably got 10 or 20 high-speed trains to pick from through the mod system. It is regional, so you have Europe, Asia, and North America. Uh, I don't like, I want to access all the trains, but I can only access the European trains, unfortunately. Um, it has... The terraining is not perfect. Uh, for example, you'll get weird looking bridges and the terrain looks nice. The graphics look better than the previous version. And uh, the one thing I don't like is the menus are too small. Like this over here, they should make it a bigger menu. Some of the menus, and I understand that you can expand it, but some of them you can't expand. And the other thing is, why not use the whole screen and let me increase the size of the type so I can read it a little bit better. In terms of the learning curve, there's some things that you have to learn that's going to take a little bit of time to learn. But in general, you're going to figure most of it out immediately. There is one thing that I don't understand, which is this option right here. 
it looks like it allows them to choose between two different terminals so that if a train comes in maybe if one is busy it has a secondary that it can go into but when i tried using it i didn't see it use the secondary line and i couldn't find anything in the help system the help system is not really good the help system will say just something like uh train station this is a station for trains you know that's what the help system mostly is it's not that useful it doesn't go through everything okay so um in terms of other games that are similar you've got sid meyer's railroads which is similar to this if you consider sid meyer's railroad a beginner to intermediate game then this would be intermediate to advanced it's not an advanced game where it's so complicated you can't figure it out but if you add the mods it can get very complicated so i'm going to say it's intermediate industry giant industry giant 2 is nearly identical to this game except for the fact that it's very old and this is this version transport fever 2 is superior to industry giant 2. they have announced industry giant 3 so you might want to look into that cities of motion 2 is only moving people and there's no cargo cities in motion 2 is a, a lot of fun i really enjoyed that game however i because the cities are definitely a lot bigger and you get way more traffic problems like the whole city could be a giant traffic jam unfortunately the game is very old and uh i do enjoy playing it but it they didn't really come with a lot of good maps and um i've moved on there's another one called Rise of Industry. Rise of Industry is not a 3D game. It's isomorphic. You build. There's no. You don't build the cities. It's basically the same as this, but it's not a 3D game. And it's way more complex. It has a very complex resource chain. It's very easy to get confused when playing rise of industry so that's a wonderful game and i play it sometimes and i add some industry and then when i get bored i move on so the thing that i like about this game as opposed to rise of industry is that you can pick a vehicle like a train and you can follow it even though this is obviously you can follow the train and it's fun to watch and see the terrain and you can watch it like this first person view which I'm sure a lot of the games have the people live in buildings and they have workplaces and they go shopping and you can watch the people walk around so the ai for that is pretty good the ai for the cargo is kind of dumb it might be dumb i'm not sure but it's dropping off things like it'll bring coal to or let's say oil to the oil refinery but then instead of putting it in the refinery someone else will come pick up that oil it's not supposed to do that it's supposed to stay there and be refined there's there's a simple resource chain it's not a complex resource chain it only goes three levels deep the raw material the first process and then the second process in terms of games like tropico um tropico has is more about uh the economy in general um, tropico 6 is a very good game but I think I would spend more time with this game. But Tropical 6 is a good alternative. SimCity. <laughs> SimCity 4, I think it's what it's called. Or SimCity 2000. There's one of them that's really good, but the graphics are really old. Where you can switch between different towns. You have to switch into a different mode. The newest one, it's nice graphically. And they got some nice ideas, but the AI is so dumb that it kind of ruined the game 
And I like this game a lot more because it's a lot more serious than the SimCity series. Cities XL is pretty good. However, it doesn't have, as far as I know, it doesn't have trains and airplanes. You only have roads. And you got to place every building. Uh, I think this is a superior game. So for all the transport management games, I think that this is probably the top one on the market right now. Not the most complex, but the top in terms of overall enjoyment, ease of play, graphics, etc. And this is the lowest graphics setting because I have an old laptop, six-year-old laptop. You have to make sure that the trains don't go head-to-head -head, uh, because obviously you have to make sure they don't go the wrong way. However, you don't have to turn them around in the station. In the station, they automatically turn around if they got to switch direction. The other thing I don't like about it is some of the options are a little bit unrealistic. I mean, do you really think this carries 104 people? Maybe that's accurate, right? But if we go to buses, a little slow, but it'll get there. Look at how big these buses are. It says 26 people. Do you really believe that this bus carries 26 people? It's got to be like 40 people. I'm counting. If it's four people per row, it's got to be like 40 people for the whole bus. So I think that they got that wrong. Um, but otherwise, it's an excellent game. The trains and the trams are not the same line as far as I know. So you can't take the tram and try and put it on the rail track like you can do with Cities of Motion. You can change the color of vehicles, which I think is pretty cool. I like to see the different colored trains coming through. I'll show you an example. That's I made this green because he's on a green line. And you see there's a pink truck in the background there. It's fun making all the bridges and the tunnels. Um, and I had to add all the, this whole entire system I had to create. And there was an old game called Railroad Tycoon 2, which I really enjoyed. And Railroad Tycoon 3 wasn't so good. Um, but this is definitely the top game. My cities are kind of small right now. The most I have is 1,000 people. I've heard that people get 100,000 people. Some of them are using mods to increase, artificially increase the size of their cities. But I know I've had thousands of people in the earlier version that I played. Um, they do stop at things like red lights. So if you've got a traffic light, they follow the road rules. And you can put traffic lights, and they can stop at the red lights and things like that. Click on a building. You can actually click on this person. You can see where that person is. person's in the car. And we can follow this person. Doesn't give you a lot of... Oh, maybe it does. So it's giving some information here about the person. Not enough, but it's giving something. For example, over here it says move mode and the window is too small and there's no way to make it bigger. They should have made these windows a little bit bigger. It's got layers. I'm going to go through them real quick. The contour lines. Navigable waters. Land use. You see how it looks in the town. speed limits, destinations. So green basically means I put the line down and blue is by car. Cargo layer. 
need to look at that a little bit more. Overloaded stations. The problem with this layer is that you can't really zoom out and see which stations are overloaded. It really doesn't help. <coughs> Same with the street traffic. Emissions. <clears throat> I know that there's overloaded stations. All I got to do is go over here. And you can see this one has 200. Oh, you know what? It must mean overloaded, meaning exceeding capacity. Now, in Cities in Motion, you could have a 1,000 people or more waiting at one bus stop. I haven't seen that yet. I've seen hundreds of people waiting. Uh, with Cities in Motion 2, it was very difficult to move people uh, sometimes. The other thing I don't like about the game, it looks like there's a maximum of six goods that are transported to the city. In Rise of Industry, there's got to be like a hundred goods you got to transport to the city. So six is kind of limited, but I know there's got to be mods that do more because I've seen images that show more than six. And when I started the map, I chose a maximum amount. The charts are pretty good, but the one thing I don't like is it doesn't really show the overall economy. See, here's a finances chart. The balance goes up and down. This is kind of dumb, tracks, who cares? This is population. And then we've got some broken out values, but it really doesn't show you how much material you're moving, how much cargo you're moving. You just have to judge based on your finances. The other thing, if you click on railroad, all it does is say maintenance vehicles and how much it is. It doesn't really help you figure it out Although the information is right here, you can see some information about these vehicles. If there's a giant traffic jam, it doesn't tell you. The game doesn't tell you. You just start losing money, and, you, and uh, it happens all the time. So you got to be careful. You could end up going bankrupt and not realize it. And then it's a little bit difficult to get back on track. Okay, so excellent game. I highly recommend it. It is worth $30. It's better than the competition. Consider Industry Giant 3 when it comes out. But stick with this. If you want a more complex game, get Rise of Industry. You can see my review on my YouTube channel. I do have a forum, which is cheapbooks.cc. Go to video games. Look for Train Fever or transport fever and you can see tips that i've written or ask me questions and i am the owner of cheapbooks.com which is a website for searching for books and textbooks hundreds of millions of web listings rare books specializes in rare books and textbooks if you have any questions or comments please post below